Hi, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Cultural Communication Confidence. And I'm really excited to be back for a podcast episode with a guest today. We have Firenze Rossini joining us. So hi, Firenze. Nice to see you again. Hi, Victoria. Very nice to see you today. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. It's absolutely brilliant to have you on the podcast. I know we started talking a few months ago about doing this, and I know you've got lots to share in terms of developing a global career and managing different stages of career. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. So uh, what I thought we'd start talking about is that we're recording this in September 2024. I get the feeling from the kinds of conversations that I'm having at the moment that there's a lot of change going on in the world of work today, particularly in the world of organizations, large companies, and that is impacting how people are thinking about their careers right now. But I would love to get your perspective on this. What are you seeing and how are you seeing the world of work right now? That's an amazing question. Um, it's something that is has been coming up with um, current clients at the minute. And in fact, some um, clients that have ended their work with me a while ago um, have actually reached back. And, you know, so I, I can see that there is this time of reflection. Um, also appreciate that in some industries, perhaps where they are and, you know, the layoffs that have um, happened have perhaps pushed people into reflecting in terms of, is this the career path that I want for myself? Am I on the right trajectory? Is there something that is missing? Um, of course, this may sound like privileged questions to to ask um, oneself for, for many individuals because of mortgages and, you know, loans and costs and all that. So I also want to, you know, highlight that because I'm aware that it, it is the reality for, for, for many and rightly so. Um, yet, even if that is um, someone's reality, I feel like there is an amount of questioning that is going. I'm going through, um, you know, rounds of interviews i'm actually having conversation with you know this new organization this other organization are there questions that i can perhaps include on my end that would make sure that there is a better fit in terms of e even the work the workplace environment perhaps you've had leaders that were not so great leaders before you've been burned in one way or, or another, or, you know, you may even find yourself having just left a toxic workplace. What would be questions that you can ask that would integrate some um, intel, right? How can you get some intel um, to answer some of the red flags you may have, right? Mm. Um, Yes. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it does. And do you know what? That's really interesting, though, isn't it? Because I think some so often we kind of think about actually some in situations like people going through, let's say, redundancies or, you know, unfortunately losing their jobs. There is that pressure to go find the next thing quickly to go and find the next job. But what I hear you talking about there is actually it's not about finding any job or finding any move it has to also be the right move and to reflect and recognize what didn't work with the previous role is is that how i understand what you're saying yes absolutely um you know if if you find yourself in a very unhappy situation before uh or or just a job that wasn't exactly what you were looking for you can definitely do better this time you can find a better manager you can find a workplace that may have may allow you to have a bit more flexibility um and it doesn't mean that you know I, i'm also very kind of down to down to us i'm aware that you know you need to find a job in many occasions quite quickly um so it it may sound un unrealistic to expect you know to go from the workplace I was in last week was really only a 10% fit in terms of ideally what I'm looking for. 
in terms of the workplace environment, um, leadership and all that. So to go from that 10% to 100%, right? But even in that range, there is so much better than you can do. And actually going from 20, 30% is already going to have so much um, positive impact on your day to day and the energy you're going to carry to work every day. Mm, I can imagine that. And I think that's quite important, isn't it? That actually, it's also a journey. It might not be that next role. It might be that, you know, there are stepping stones that take you towards the absolute ideal role. Um, so it, actually, that's a really good sort of aiming point to have. Um, so, you know, I'm also interested because I know that some of the, the listeners who are um, tuning into this podcast they are people who some of them are already in global careers, but some really want to get into that space. So maybe they are working for an international organization already, but based in one location. Maybe they want to have experiences where they are perhaps working in more diverse teams. Maybe they even want to really relocate um, and be living and working in a different country to have a different experience. Do you have any sort of tips and ideas? Because I know yourself that you're incredibly multicultural, that you've had those experiences yourself. And I know you help clients with this as well. So how do you build that sort of global career? How can you make that transition? That's a great question. Um, I would say it's something that you and I have talked about, actually, um, in before, Um really working on your self-awareness first and you know first and foremost um so it sounds like you know one may be clear already that having a global career is something that is important for their you know career growth um clarifying how that will help them right so what is what is perhaps the experience exactly what are the skills that they are trying to develop then working or simultaneously working on you know their their own self-awareness what do I mean by that what are your values what do you stand for what are your strengths what are you bringing into your next role the role that you're gonna um be starting soon internationally um and then I would say getting also quite acquainted with the culture um there's so many assessments, right? And so many kind of information that we can find um, nowadays where you get to learn more about the culture. So how does this culture typically communicate? How does this culture perhaps typically makes decision or provides feedback? Uh, how's hierarchy perceived? And yeah, so really getting um, acquainted with those concepts and comparing how, you know, where is that picture compared to your own picture and your own personal preferences? I would say that this would be the the uh, the place to start. What do you think? Would you? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, I absolutely agree with you. Like, I think you're right. It is about understanding yourself, but understanding, like, if there are certain, um, I don't know, you know specifically which cultures you might want to work with or where you might like to relocate to, doing research, understanding where the similarities, maybe the differences might come up. Um, but I think it, you know, it's also really important to recognize there are so many different ways to learn. So I think the models are a really great way, definitely. And I, I know you use them in your work, I use them in mine. Um, but I, I wonder as well, whether just, are there sort of certain places that you go to in terms of insights I don't know whether you have certain um I don't know people you follow on LinkedIn or books that you recommend or I don't know do you have any sort of places that you do you use to help with this to have that sort of broader view of the world I would say the the book that I've recommended many times especially when it's the first move that you're looking at, or even you're getting into the space of working with people, you know, from different cultures is the culture map by Erin Mayer. That is, it's my kind of go-to place. And I find it very tangible and the feedback I'm getting from clients that I'm recommending the book is yes, you know, it was a quick, it it's a, it's a relatively quick read. And if you, if you work in a, in a, in an organization, you will resonate with many, if not all, the examples that are provided. Um, I'm also um, a big fan of RW3 that I've been doing some work with, and also Hofstetter Insights. 
um, Ofsted Insights specifically because perhaps you're not familiar at all with the country, you're able to plot um, the different uh, cultural norms of several several countries all together, and you you have access to that instantly, which is amazing, um, and it's free, which is also amazing. Um, I would say those are really the places where I would recommend starting and having a look. Um, I really love the cultural intelligence model that I know you 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 work with, although I am not. Um, an accredited facilitator, so I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but the the literature around that is 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 quite is quite helpful, I find as well. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's the thing. There are so many different ways, right? There's so many different models, and I think we're very we're in a stage of where there are many different angles on this, and there's lots of information out there. So it's a great, you know, there's a lot we can do as individuals, and I know the work you do and I do, helping clients understand themselves and others. But I think one of the questions that sometimes comes up, and I'm really curious to get your perspective on this, is that, you know, how do we, the people that we tend to work with tend to be really very open and want to be able to adapt themselves. But how do you not over adapt? How do you stay still true to yourself, but still be a good global leader? <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense as a question, but how do we do this? Like get the balance right? Absolutely. So once you know yourself and you get to know more, more and more about the cultures that you're going to be exposed to, so you 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 get to build that um, that knowledge base a fair amount. Um, perhaps there is an opportunity there to identify what's the gap, um, and in that gap, what is important for me to honor. And what could I adapt on? Um, I think it's important to identify those two things because that will then allow you to keep your authenticity in one way. Um, you, you might, you may realize that in a culture, if you're having, if so, pose you may identify that in a culture that you're often working with, there is um, a strong sense of disagreement is not something that we do in public or as a group in a, in a, in a team meeting. And then that may not fit with you personally. In that situation, in that context, what do you do? Do you honor your own value or actually do you adapt and find different ways to express that disagreement? Um, I don't necessarily think that there's a right or wrong answer, but get, if, you ident if, you're, if one is able to identify that and then also reflect on the impact that your decision may have, I think you then are empowered, right? And whatever you decide will feel more authentic for you. If I take another example, perhaps you work in a, in a culture and um, expressing emotions are not necessarily something that is done um, in a meeting, but you decide or you, you actually firstly know that for you, it's very important to express emotions and to have hands and you know it, it shows your enthusiasm or perhaps um, your lack of enthusiasm. What do you want to do? You may decide that actually, yes, I've reflected there's this gap. Um, and I don't think that if I were to ex over express my enthusiasm as per that culture, um, cultural norm, it's going to it's going to have a negative impact for myself or for the group. So here I decide that I want to honor that value of mine and, you know, not go up for the poker face um, philosophy, let's say. And so that's fine, right? You made a choice, you, you you made a conscious choice. And I think that authenticity comes with that. It's, it, it's not about forgetting who you are and just adapting and flexing because that then could a little bit <sighs> go in the territory of masking and covering, right? Um, so if you've reflected and you've, 
you've really assessed what's going on. I think that's where the, the authenticity um, can come up. Mm, I like that. And I like, I like the examples you gave there because it's not the same answer on every for every situation. It sounds like it's very situation dependent, right? So you've got to decide what is most effective in this situation, what's going to help me, I suppose, connect to the other person in that situation, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And connection, I mean, you have to find a way to connect when you move to another country, when you work with with or within a team that is multicultural you have to find that um and there isn't a one size fits all answer you need to figure it out based on yourself where you're at um and where others are at and that's where the magic happens as well i like the the um you know the just the the thing that there is no one size fits all there is no framework that you can follow you know you do this and then this and and then this there is always so much um personal um, reflection that we bring into it and then because we're all humans it's it's unique so we have unique answers all around so that's that's amazing yeah I like I like that idea there is no one size fits all and I, I suppose at the same time, though, you know, thinking about practically for, say, let's say somebody was suddenly a leader of a team across different time zones, different countries, they're based in one location, everybody else is based in different locations. What sort of tips have you got for creating that connection? What are the ideas that you've got? Because I know one of the things that you're very passionate about is the sense of belonging and creating belonging. So I'm I'm really interested to get your perspective on that. Yeah, that's a great question. I I mean, my recommendation there would be to get to know your team, get to know them on a one-to-one, -one, you know, have one-to-one -one scheduled, especially at the beginning of that um partnership of you being in that role or a new team member joining get to know them not just you know the cv not just updates on their project and tasks but actually get to know them what do you stand for uh what what is important for you what's you know what are the the big um the big milestones even that you've had so far in life and i appreciate that depending on the cultures, it may not be questions that you can ask straight away. And perhaps you need more time before asking the questions or actually finding answers through perhaps a bigger conversation. And so really giving yourself time, permission to to take time for that relationship to be to be established. So again, you know, there is perhaps simultaneously a bit of homework to do in terms of what are the cultures that I'm working with here? Um, what do I need to know about them? How can I educate myself um, in a way that is enough for me to have those successful um, rapport being built? And then also I would um, recommend getting some time as a team Um you 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 can't just be having silo conversation one to one. That's great to do, but also do bring the team together straight away. Um, and perhaps being, you know, I'm I'm actually a big believer in this. Um, share that it's a work in progress. That you know, this is what you're doing. This is perhaps where you want to go. You would you would want to create a team where everyone feels. Um, included and they feel that they belong and so this is you know my plan this is the the structure that I'm giving myself invite people to give you ideas in that meeting on emails on whatever other mean that you think may match the different cultures that you have there or different styles that you've identified um, it will take time I do think that it takes time to create that sense of belonging but it's it's crucial because if people, if team members feel that they belong, then that's where you have a very productive team, a very efficient team, creative. So yes, it's um, it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is so important because that sense of um, 
connection and belonging actually is really hard to cultivate in current times, I think, when we don't have that sort of water cooler chat. We don't have those little moments during the day where we can just have a quick conversation about something. And so I, I sort of really like your uh, your sort of suggestion there that it takes as long as it takes. Actually, in some cultures with some people, you can go more like direct and say, well, tell me all about yourself. With other people, you might, that may, may take time. Um, so, you know, I really appreciate that suggestion actually, because the way that we reveal ourselves isn't necessarily the way that others do that, right? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And um, it, if, if a leader hasn't had a lot of exposure to cultures, Perhaps, you know, one thing that can feel surprising is how much of their personal life or not the team members may bring um, and just how in some cultures it's so common to just, you know, spread over what's going on at home and in other cultures, it's really not. And, you know, it may feel that, oh, this is inappropriate territory, but actually, yeah, it very much depends. And so... Perhaps yourself as a leader, you know, getting comfortable um, with um, different type of conversation or social chat that you may have at the start or at the end of a meeting, if you're not used to it, um, could be something to consider too. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I think one of the most revealing questions I find is sometimes if you ask somebody, how are you? And what kind of response you get to that? You know, I've had conversations where people with well, how are you has a response of yep yeah, fine you <laughs> and I've had conversations with people where how are you has led to almost like a five minute monologue with really quite a lot of depth about somebody's personal life what was really going on for them now context plays a role in this obviously the, the relationship dynamic the power dynamic but I you know I find that really fascinating the interpretation we can put behind a very simple question like this Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And so for people who are building this kind of global career, who are looking to become, you know, the global leaders of tomorrow, or maybe they're there already, you know, what do you see as the most important factors for success, like going forward, you know, in the current times, but also as you look forward, you know, what do you see is coming up for your clients and, and that people really need to think about as their as important to develop their careers? what's coming to mind is developing inclusive behaviors for yourself but also as part of the culture of the team you you are a leader now and you are developing tomorrow's leaders um so there is you know this massive kind of waterfall <laughs> um effect i think um and we are, I believe the workplace is getting more and more diverse, um, age, race, um, are you neurotypical, neurodivergent? So much, so much is, is kind of being talked about now, which is great. Um, and I'm, I'm a big believer that we have to do something good about it. Um, and we have responsibility as we have a responsibility as leaders. We want to. I, I do believe that if you if we are able as leaders to cultivate inclusive behaviors, not only it's going to help our team members being their best self, because then they feel included, they feel that they belong, you get better results as well. But then yourself as as a leader, um, you get loyalty probably, right? Because you have you have created such a a strong sense of belonging in your in your team members. You're able to it, it demonstrate that you're able to communicate and um, not only in a technical work capacity but also beyond that so it does set you up for success in your own trajectory as a leader as you're moving up um yeah I think that would yeah. be the, um, the top thing that's that's coming to mind Fantastic. No, thank you for sharing that. It's just really interesting to get your perspective kind of on, on that question. 
So, you know, one of the things that I, I always like to sort of ask people who come on the podcast is that the name of this podcast is Cultural Communication Confidence. And apart from being three Cs, um, I'm kind of interested to get your perspective on what does that mean for you? Like, how do can we be more confident in cultural communication? That's a great question. Um all right, getting a second to think about that. How can we be more confident in cultural communication? I would start with perhaps getting clear on our own definition. What do we mean? What do we mean by communication? But then more specifically, what do we mean by cultural communication? What's our own what's our own objective there? Um, which perhaps may include our own challenges. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what would it mean for us to be confident? I I think that it's it can be quite subjective um, what confidence means to people, but then especially when it comes to communication, um, I find that some people go straight into being confident to you know talking to an audience in front of an audience public speaking and what if that audience is made of um different cultures right so it could mean that someone many people would associate pu the public speaking uh, you know element uh, other people may go more into i really want to limit any mis misunderstandings that we have in the team i want you know, if I'm if I'm talking about something in a in a meeting, or if someone else is talking about something in a meeting, I really want everyone to be on the same page and everyone to hear the same thing. So how how can we achieve that? Um, so what do we mean <laughs> yeah. would be um would be my my top thing. Um, and what do you need to get there? Is that is that only about self work is it only about yourself or do we need external resources is that teamwork that's needed if there's something else that's needed so what is that yeah and i think that's a really interesting point that you raise which is confidence is subjective actually we're often looking at other people and, and saying well they look confident as a mm. leader or confident in that situation however actually they may be way out of their comfort zone but just not outwardly kind of showing that and I think that's really interesting when it comes to the space of cultural communication or communicating across cultures you know this idea of actually what does confidence look like we never really probably ever feel fully confident or fully aware of what's going on and actually that that's okay like to accept that is okay absolutely and to your point, yes, I think, you know, many see others and they feel like, oh, wow, this person is so, this person is so confident. Uh, I want to be like them, right? Um, because they see confidence, but that person may be in a totally different headspace and they may also have, you know, their own doubts. <laughs> uh, but we don't see that. We don't see that. Uh, we are really seeing things through our own lens so um yes agreed <laughs> excellent just one last thought I know how important this idea of belonging and inclusiveness is important to you and your work and what you do what is just the final thought from you in terms of how do we increase belonging in global teams how do we create more of that inclusive thinking mm. I would say really looking at behaviors that go on, um, behaviors that really go on. So perhaps the the things that are not talked about um, that tend to happen in the background or um, not necessarily things that are sad, right? So there could be more of reading the room that may be, that may be needed. Are those behaviors having the impact that you're expecting to create within your team? Um, and if so, that's great. But if not, what could we do? What could we do about that? Um, are 
our team members really understood? Do we know each other? Do we do we know what's important for each other? Um, if not, what could be done? What could the leader perhaps create to facilitate that conversation? Um, and talk about the difference that it can lead to, the impact, the positive impact that inclusive behaviors can have, not just for the work itself, but also towards a stronger sense of belonging. Um, and yeah, I'll stop there. Excellent. Well, that's a really great last thought. So thank you so much, Forenza, for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And this has been a great conversation. I really enjoyed talking to you about these topics. And I think, you know, I've taken a lot from this and I think our listeners will do as well. So, you know, thank you so much for joining us here. Just as a last thought, if people want to connect with you to find out more about what you do, where are the best places for them to to kind of find out more about you, to go kind of come follow you and uh, find out more about what you do? Thank you so much, Victoria. First of all, it's been amazing to to have had this conversation with you. So thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Um, I'm a lot on LinkedIn these days, so I would love to. Yeah, uh, if, if if people want to find me on, on, on LinkedIn and carry on, you know, this conversation uh, and share further thoughts on what we've said today, I'm I'm there and would love to. Um, you can also find me on my website, growinnow.com. Um, yeah, thank you so much again, Victoria. No problems at all. And by the way, I highly recommend as well, Forenza's um, podcast as well, which is the, the Belonging Project. Is that right? That's right. So yeah, you can have a, a listen to that as well. But we'll put all the links in the show notes. Um, but in the meantime, a huge thank you to you, Forenza. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you, Victoria. My pleasure. Lovely. And look forward to seeing everybody next time.